Hi, everyone, and welcome to the Neil Haley Show. You can check me out on Twitter at TotalTutor and NeilHaley.com and all those exciting places. And it's Friday, and it's time for our great segment with WPL Hall of Famer, ESPN analyst, Coach Karen Hall, you now be running web as well. Coach, how are you? Excited about our guest today. You keep lining up such amazing people. How are you? Yeah, no, I'm doing well today, and uh, it's good to be back on the show. I love our Fridays, and we're gearing up for March Madness and how exciting a time of year this will be. And today we're, we've been talking about the Atlantic 10 tournament coming to Pittsburgh, and we have one along with us today, Assistant Commissioner for men's regular season and basketball championships, Jay DeFruzio from the Atlantic 10. Jay, welcome to the show. Thank you, Karen. Thank you, Neil. Great to be with you this morning. And, I, and I'm sure that it's 70 degrees in Pittsburgh, and that's the way it's going to be in two weeks, correct? You're, verifi- you're well, guaranteeing that for us, right? <laughs> yeah, we've guaranteed that for you about a month ago, right, Neil? <laughs> <laughs> I don't, I'm, I'm just so concerned. That would be great, I think. Well, we at least got 70 today for you, but at any rate, Jay, we're glad to have you on, and we'd like to really um, just kind of get right into talking about the tournament. We're almost, what, a week away from the Atlantic 10 taking Pittsburgh by storm, so is it exciting times down there, or what's happening? Well, about a week and a half away, Karen, and uh, it really is exciting, and and I got to say that, you know, I I, I know I speak for Commissioner McGlade and all of our members. There's such a buzz about coming to Pittsburgh. It is a – no offense to the other cities we've been in because they're all great, but just from the time we decided we were going to come to Pittsburgh, the, the sense of community involvement has been unbelievable. And from the arena, from Visit Pittsburgh, from the vendors, from Duquesne University, from the mayor's office, we, we've just been felt that the red carpet has been rolled out from the start. So it was like two years in the making, so we're now two weeks, less than two weeks away we got some great basketball still to play down the stretch. and uh, right. But, you know, we're really excited about coming uh, to PPG Paints Arena in, in the great city of Pittsburgh. Nice. Yeah, and definitely. And uh, we, we hope we'll bring this weather, right? It, it seems yeah. like it's summer. You're, you're guaranteeing it, Neil. I'm telling the commissioner <laughs> you and Karen are guaranteeing it. <laughs> well, I'm, I'm hoping so for sure. And uh, I think the excitement of, of – the conference tournament coming to Pittsburgh and having the opportunity to see such great basketball and such great talent, right, Jay? You know, it really is. You know, we, you know, we feel like, you know, we're one of the best basketball centric conferences in the country. And the good thing about our championship from my standpoint, there's a lot of really good things, but coming to Pittsburgh is, you know, our championship is a community based championship and mm-hmm. in Pittsburgh, the Pittsburgh community, that's what they're all about there. You folks are a community. You know, Wednesday night we're doing our community night promotion where we have three thousand paid tickets that we, we bought, our members have bought and have donated into the community, uh, mm. for like first responders and, and fire department and, and police department. Folks who and other folks from community groups who can't afford to come to a college basketball game. And then on Thursday morning, we're doing our, our school day promotion, which is being mm-hmm. sponsored by the, the Penguins Foundation. We're going to have 2,500, you know, uh, students, middle school and grammar school students at the game. Nancy mm-hmm. Lieberman, who's a Hall of Famer, is going to be our guest speaker. You know, and mm-hmm. then on, sun, on Sunday, uh, when we have Championship Sunday on, on national CBS, I mean, it just builds its way up. We have such – not only do we have good teams, but we have some Pittsburgh connections, you know, with Archie Miller, the coach right. of – at Dayton with Mark Schmidt, right. the coach at St. Bonaventure, who was the coach of Robert Mars, with Jim Ferry, obviously, and the staff over at Duquesne. So there's so many great connections. And, and Pittsburgh is just a great sports city. I mean, I, I spent a lot of my career in Wheeling, West Virginia, and coaching in college, and, and two of my children went to school in Pittsburgh and have been to Pittsburgh a lot. It's just a, a great sports city. And the, the support of the arena, the support of Visit Pittsburgh, the support of, the, of Duquesne, everybody has just been phenomenal. You know, we had Paul Hightower on last week, and, uh, you know, we know that you guys were in the Barclays a couple years ago. Right. And then, and and like you said, you had your pick of cities that you could have uh, easily took the A-10 tournament to. So you speak about Pittsburgh being such a great sports town, which we are. So when you look um, right now in the tournament that's coming, how will you evaluate uh, the actual whole tournament at the end. Any idea? Can you well, take a look well, at it? 
Well, Karen, you know, you know that one of the big things is f- first off, we we only want to go to to championship cities. Like you mentioned, we were in Brooklyn. Right. They have a great facility. Right. They got great folks there. That's why we're looking at Pittsburgh. And next year, we're at the Verizon Center back in D.C. But right. in evaluating, right. quite honestly, in evaluating, there's two main things that I do for evaluation. One is we want to make it the best experience for our student athletes, our coaches, our administrators, our fans of our of the A10 teams. And and that that I guarantee that's a home run. That's not even an issue. Mm-hmm. But quite mm-hmm. honestly, Karen, you know, basketball is a spectator event. And so we right. really need to fill the arena. And I and right. you know, our attendance has been growing in in our f- uh, four years that we were in Barclays. It, I am so convinced we're going to break every attendance and sales record up in Pittsburgh cuz I just know we are. That's a big part of the evaluation process is the excitement and the buzz and getting people in the seats at PPJ Pins mm-hmm. Arena. And again, and not to reiterate, but going back to what we're trying to do with the community, we're trying to do with with mm-hmm. school day. We're that's a big thing. You know, the majority of our fans, other than the school people who come from the schools, are going to be the Pittsburgh area. You know, throw right. throw a wide net maybe out three hours from there. That's who the sports fan, the basketball fan, the rabbit basketball fan is the one that's going to come there. Right. The one who the one who goes to the NCAA tournament when you have it in Pittsburgh. The one that supports right. you know your local teams. The high school sports are so big in Pittsburgh. Um, mm-hmm. So we're hoping that all of our efforts and the efforts with the arena will will. When I look up on Sunday, Karen, and I see a bunch of people, uh, a full house in in the arena, in my mind, that'll be successful. Yes, yes. That that's that's our hope as well, Jay. And I think that March Madness is the greatest time uh, for any college basketball fan. And because we don't have the opportunity always to participate in March Madness, uh, think about the days of the University of Pittsburgh. It always it was at Madison Square Garden. Uh, mm-hmm. The ACC is so far away uh, right. sometimes for the uh, championship. So now you have an opportunity with uh, the Atlantic 10 and such great talented teams that there's going to be so many fans in Pittsburgh that just want to see great college basketball. And that's our hope. And that really is. And we're, you know, we have, uh, we have great teams uh, and some great coaches in our league. And, and again, we know, that the Pittsburgh sports fan is a pretty darn knowledgeable fan. You know, you can, they're, 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 they know good basketball when they see it, and they're going to want to come and see right. it. And here's, the interest, here's the other interesting thing, folks, is that, you know, from a, from a, a trivia type thing, 35 years ago was the last time the championship was in Pittsburgh. 35 mm-hmm. years ago it was competed at the Civic Arena. And the, AD, mm-hmm. AD, the A-10 tournament started in 76-77, and the first winner was, take a guess. Uh-oh. Duquesne. Duquesne. So that was at the I get the one thousand dollars. I won. <laughs> and for the next four years, the championship was was at in the Civic Arena. So thirty five mm-hmm. years ago, the championship was right there in Pittsburgh, and now it's back thirty five years later. We we think it's going to be just and and if you go back to the record books and go through your archives, you'll see the crowds thirty five years ago for the championship were oh, yeah. unbelievable, and we're hoping oh. to replicate that and do a little step better. On Saturday, we have our Legends program. We we uh, we have a legend from every one of our programs. One of the all-time great players or coaches is going to be honored at a banquet and then be honored at the game. Norm Nixon from Duquesne, who a lot of people will remember awesome. from his, is is from there. Kenny Durrett, who 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 played at LaSalle, who unfortunately has passed, but was a guy I watched in Philly growing up when he was at, who's a Pittsburgh area native. He's being honored that day. So. Mm. So many connections to Pittsburgh, and being 35 years since we've been back, and uh, it's just there's just there's a lot of karma going on, guys. That we hope that'll equate in some big crowds. Well, I will tell you what, I've already seen a commercial or two about the A10. So will the, um, the publicity pick up as the week nears here in Pittsburgh? Is that a plan? Yeah. yeah, and so I'll tell you some of the things we and I when I was up there last month for uh, for our meetings. I was in the hotel and saw that uh, that this, the 30-second spot was actually – actually, our 30-second ticket spot ran during the Patriot-Steeler um, game. But what mm-hmm. you're going to start wow, seeing okay. in these two weeks out now, Karen, around the arena you're going to see uh, signs on the – you know, up on the on the poles. You know, you're going to see some okay. of those flags. You're going to see stuff in yeah. the windows of, of, uh, of uh, businesses. You're going to see sidewalk right. – uh, 
sidewalk labels. You're going to see some bands nice. when the tournament comes in down in Market nice. Square. You're going to see there's going to be a big sign out at the airport. There's going to be digital signs at the airport. There's going to be tables Great. like tents on the luggage racks on the, on the hotel and, and the uh, airports. You're going to see us yeah. barraging uh, everything uh, within this, you know, starting this week and going into next week in the championship where people are going to know the A-10s there. The other great thing is about our tournament is our team hotels are all downtown and walking distance to the arena and Pittsburgh, mm-hmm. as I know, is a great walking city. So our fans mm-hmm. are going to, you know, our fans are just going to love it. You know, they're going to be able to go to Strip District. They're going to be able to go up, you know, up the incline. They're going to be able to go to Station Square. They're going to be able to go to the south side. It's just, it's just a lot going on for our fans as well, which, which, is, which is exciting to us. Because you know, some fans, we love the fans that stay for every game, but they usually come, a lot of them will come for their team. But what else is right. there to do in Pittsburgh? Well, we, we have a digital fan guide on our championship site that's kind of letting people know what they can do in Pittsburgh. And we're working with Visit mm-hmm. Pittsburgh and all that. So it's just a group. You know what it is? It's a team effort. Not, not anybody can do it by themselves, but we really have right. a solid team we're working with there. Let's talk right. about marketing. That's great. Like that Coach Hall brought up, uh, Jay, um, you talk about signs, different things. What do you see logistics-wise now when you're only a few weeks away from the tournament to get the word out? We, you know, you ran commercials before, but what do you see as the most valuable thing to get the well, local people to buy tickets? Not, You know that yeah. every team has a specific amount of tickets, right. so you're going to get the you know. Well, I think what we've in the last six weeks what we've tried to do is we call it the A-10 Minute. So we've bought we've bought time on a lot of your local channels to do a, a sixty yeah. second thing on the championship. You know, uh, we're also the marketing through the arena. You're going to see more in print. You're going to see more on the radio. You're going to see more on TV yeah. ads. In addition to all the signage and stuff around the arena, I think you're going to see in these next two weeks that the marketing efforts uh, are going to ramp up big time. So you know, mm-hmm. you're going to you're going to be seeing eight ten around a lot. And, uh, you know, the, the plan that has been developed by the arena with us and also with Visit Pittsburgh to get the exposure, it's not just the exposure. The beginning of our marketing plan, like maybe six, twelve, to six, nine to 12 months ago, was an exposure thing. Like we were at the mm-hmm. – um, uh, we were at the, Commissioner McGlade threw the first pitch out at a pirate game. We were at uh, mm-hmm. Open Street, stuff like that. Now it goes from exposure to getting people to buy tickets. You know, right. not, you know, people and literally, uh, historically, the last two weeks prior to the championship is when tickets start going because fans start saying, oh, now I know when my team's going to be there and I want to try to get good tickets. And so ticket sales have been brisk, which is good, but we're never going to mm-hmm. be satisfied. When I say we, ourselves or the arena until it's sold out. That's where our goal was to do that. So I think you're going to see a lot more A-10 popping up print uh, in the media in on radio on tv ads on the streets you, you know on, on social media you're going to see a lot more attendees last 10 days getting out to the tournament so here's a question for you because the um and it's still in lieu of the marketing because the arena had a name change in the midst of you all preparing to bring the a10 here you go from the console energy to the tpg paint so right. in your marketing did that affect anything or were you all just beginning that planning at that time. Well, it's interesting because we were, at the time they were making the change, and we didn't know, obviously, we didn't know about the change coming. They didn't, you know, obviously we weren't consulted, nor should we be. But we were putting right. together our strategy, we, we our marketing plan, and what we call our family branding. So, like, all the, all the like, when you go, when you start seeing the sign poles, the, the flags that are up on the signs, which are going up first of next week, when you start seeing them, It'll all be in this. Or if you start seeing the merchandise that's being produced, it's all going to be like a family, so you know it identifies with the championships. And so mm. we were in that process getting in that, and I remember thinking to myself, we got to get moving on some of this stuff. And the folks at the arena are saying, I think we got time. Let's work. <laughs> we'll get this done. Well, then yeah. obviously the name change came, so it really got on. We were really in good shape where we didn't say, okay. oh, my gosh, now we've got to change everything. So it really it's seamless in the way the transition went. And, you know, again, uh, you know, the name recognition of the arena. I mean, it's just uh, – and and I've been in the arena so many times for NCAA events. It's just a great mm-hmm. place yeah. to watch sporting events and uh, yeah. easy to get to. I mean, I, I'm going to be excited about Saturday, like a whole championship, especially Saturday and Sunday when it's going to be a beautiful 70-degree day because Neil already said it's going to be. And people are walking up for the afternoon games, and, and their lines are all the way down the street. That's what we're looking forward to. Mm-hmm. 
<laughs> yeah, well, I know your fan base for sure, because I mean, I've seen some of your games, some of your men's and women's games on television. I tell you what, as you mentioned, they're really, really excited about their teams. And you've already connected, you know, Pittsburgh to the teams in your conference. So from that standpoint, I mean, Archie Miller and was being here, you know, local kid, Blackhawk, he's very successful. I mean, do you think that will really help that marketing and bring that fan base out with the connectedness from your conference to Pittsburgh? Yeah, and what we've done, I, I do believe that, Karen. I do believe that's important. And what we did and what you'll start seeing in some of our spots now these net last two weeks, we have ran we ran some – we we we've produced some spots with Archie, with Mark mm-hmm. Schmidt, with people who are connected there. So, to, so you'll start right. seeing some of that on TV, like, hey, I'm Archie Miller of Dayton University, you know, come to the A-10 championship in, in Pittsburgh type of thing. So if you didn't know mm-hmm. that Archie was there and connected, you're going to get that connection there. The, mm-hmm. the other thing that is really helpful for us is that there's quite a few, and spe- more so for Duquesne for obvious reasons, but quite a few alumni groups that are in a relatively easy driving distance to the arena. So we've heard a lot of our mm-hmm. alumni groups are getting together. And, and, again, here's where the partnership Visit Pittsburgh's been able to help us with identifying some local watering holes that they can have meetings, mm-hmm. you know, they can meet before the game. There's great places inside the arena where they can have some hospitality events. And and we're trying to build, Karen, this what I call an A-10 affinity. By that I mean this, okay, you went to Duquesne, so you're obviously connected to Duquesne. And you went to Dayton, you're obviously connected to Dayton, but they're all part of the A-10. So not only are you a – Dayton supporter, but you're an A-10. It's that affinity we're trying to build with all of our schools. Uh, and we, we're trying. We've been really working on making the A-10 championship like a destination. Like you and the, a bunch of guys want to go, see good basketball. So, hey, where's the A-10 played this year? And we've, we've already heard from some people who have been in Brooklyn and said, hey, my buddies, we're going to come to Pittsburgh now because we just love A-10 mm-hmm. basketball. So that affinity mm-hmm. is really important. Mm-hmm. Yes. Yeah. It definitely is important, and, and that's the, the, the nice thing about when you talk about uh, the conference and talk about the teams and talk about how many fans are going to come up front to Pittsburgh. Look at Dayton. Uh, they bring a lot, don't they, of yeah. fans. Yeah. Yeah, and here, here's the other thing that people don't realize, you know, and I and I get it. I mean, and this is part of, of the, the imaging, the branding, and the affinity. I think if you ask the normal person in Pittsburgh, Okay, to name name half of the A10 schools, they may have trouble doing that right offhand. You know, they know Duquesne, but then if you say, well, Dayton, no, oh, really, that's A10 and VCU and Richmond. The fact remains that in the last five years, five years, nine of our teams, nine different teams, have been to the NCAA tournament from our league. Yeah. Nine of our 14 schools have been to the NCAA tournament. So if you say to somebody, we've well, heard of UMass, well, yeah, well, I know what UMass is. Oh, they're in the A10, really? Or Rhode Island, really? They're in the A10. So again, we, we our our continual job is to build that brand affinity and branding for our schools, and but it's it's a high level of basketball, and uh, certainly nine of our schools have been there. VCU has been to all five. VCU is one of ten schools that have been to the last five NCAA tournaments. There's only ten schools that have done that. VCU is one of them. Uh, Dayton's been to three mm-hmm. of the last five. St. Louis has been to three of the last five. Davidson's been three of the last five. So people are like Davidson. That's a ten. Yeah, that's a ten. So. You know, Bob mm-hmm. McKillop, a great coach at Davidson. Steph Curry, who played at Davidson. Oh, yeah, that 38-10. Again, sometimes it surprises people. And, you know, because you know, people are used to saying, well, I've heard of North Carolina. I know they're ACC, and I know that high State's in the Big Ten. I would say that some people in Pitt for a while probably didn't know that, P- that Pittsburgh was, had moved to the ACC. Some people may still think, you know, they were in the Big East. But yeah. we've we got to continue to move that on. No, so you have players like you mentioned UMass. So you have an alumni like Jim McCoy, who's yep. back in Pittsburgh. You had and he's been, Don Calipari, who was coaching there. Is he being right. honored? Yeah, one Jim, Jim is one of our Jim is one of our legends this year, so he'll be honored as yeah. well. Yeah, I mean, and you talk about people that didn't know. I mean, but there's all these uh, Pittsburgh connections. I, mean, I forgot about Jimmy until you mentioned UMass. Yep. And I'm like, wow, yeah. there's another Pittsburgh A10 connection. Uh, who I know he's back here in town. So, right. I mean, all this connecting this, um, as you're saying with your marketing, you're really playing on, you know, the attachment and, like you're saying, build that affinity, the A-10 affinity. I agree. And, you know, when you have people like Jimmy, who, like I said, is going to be at the at the banquet on Saturday because he's being honored, and, and Norm Nixon, who's my error, because uh, I'm an old guy, 
And uh, I mean, people are like, oh my God, you know, I, I didn't realize, you know, when you go back and look at the record books, go back and look in the archives of the eight ten championship when Norm Nixon played in it, and how how dominant he was. And of course, well, everybody knows he went on and played with the Lakers and won world championships mm-hmm. and stuff. But you know, you, you should forget that was thirty five years ago. You know, people are like, yeah. wow, you know. And you know, again, you wanna you wanna build on your your past successes and value the the people that went ahead of us and and. You know, we hope that a bunch of people are going to want to come Saturday to the game because not because it's going to be two really good games, but that Jimmy McCoy is going to be honored. He's going to walk out at halftime. Norm Nixon's going to walk mm-hmm. out at halftime. Mm-hmm. Uh, a representative mm-hmm. Kenny Durrett's daughter is going to walk out at halftime. These are Pittsburgh mm-hmm. natives who've made big, and uh, we, we right. want to we want to really honor their their accomplishments, and then you know honor the accomplishments of the young people we have playing now. Mm-hmm. It's- what I think that, that's so cool is you talked about the talented teams that are in the conference and how you never know which one's going to be that a team to make the run in the NCAA. Like yeah, you know, I'll be honest with you. If you look at, I'll give you another example. So you look at our league. Now this is my sixth year with the league. St. Bonaventure in our last year in Atlantic City was 2012, my first year with the conference. St. Bonaventure was like a sixth seed and they win the tournament. Okay. So then we go up to Brooklyn, and uh, and St. Louis won the tournament. They were the top seed. But then St. Joe's, VCU, and St. Joe's were the last three champions, okay? And none of them were the number one seed. Mm. So, so you know, it's hard to – you know, the number one seed – I don't want to put the whammy on the number one seed, by the way. But something <laughs> happens championship week, you know what I mean? Yeah. And, and people, you know, we haven't had a back-to-back – we have not had a back-to-back winner of this tournament. Mm. And so, you mm. know, if you said to me, well, Jay, you know, you see enough basketball because I go around, I've seen every team play in person. I go to all the arenas. Who, what do you think? I'd say, you know what? And this is being brutally honest here. I think any of four or five or maybe even six teams could, could get hot and win this thing uh, mm. in Pittsburgh. I really do. I mean, I think there's some teams that are going to struggle, but I do think in my mind, there are, someone asked me this this morning, you know, I don't want to name them because I don't want to put the whammy on anybody. But there's five or six teams that can win this championship. So the mm-hmm. seeding is important because the top four seeds get a bye to Friday. So they get the extra rest. Right. Okay. Mm-hmm. And the bottom four seeds play Wednesday night. So they got they have the hardest road. you got to win. If you're in that bottom four, you got to win Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, you know, mm-hmm. sat, Saturday. And so it's hard. It really is hard. Right. And so you may say, well, look, it's, there's value. Well, if you earn those first four spots, you get the extra rest. But that doesn't guarantee you're going to win it. And two years ago, right. BCU was in the five seed, and they won the whole tournament. So they won Thursday, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. So, you know, again, it's, it's, I would rather, if you're asking my opinion, I'd rather be a top seed because you get the rest and you've earned, you know, and your record's mm-hmm. really good. But there's no guarantee that that's going to, you know, translate and win the championship. I mean, when, when you look at tournament time and just my evaluation and just being in basketball, it, it, you got to come down to who's healthy what teams are healthy, what teams are playing well. You know, you talk about bench factor, who's getting the production off the bench, because you're mentioning, I mean, the top seed is supposed to win, but it's not necessarily a guarantee because some of the things that I just mentioned. So, I mean, I think you just covered my thought in terms of, you know, it's 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 not wide open, but it's possible, basically. But, but Karen, let me let me, and you know, you know, having you know, having coached for a long time, but let me the le- and 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 I have coached myself for over thirty years. You, what a, what the diff- there's difference makers in our league, and I'll tell you what it is. Right. The teams that have won the last couple of years, if you look back on their rosters, right. the common thread is seniors. Mm-hmm. This is a league where people mm-hmm. don't. This isn't a one and done league where guys play one yeah. year, your freshman side, and they leave. They developed. Mm-hmm. If you look at St. Joe's team last year, they were led by seniors. VCU the year before mm-hmm. seniors. When Bonaventure won in mm-hmm. 2012 was when Andrew Nicholson, who's now playing in the pros, they had quality seniors. These mm-hmm. seniors who have been tournament tested, not that freshmen aren't right. good players, and we have a lot of really right. good freshmen, and Duquesne has some really good freshman players. But at the end of the day, Karen, you know this, when you're trying to win four games in a row, okay, experience and depth and staying yep. healthy, and being a little bit lucky, Karen, let's face it, right, I'd rather be lucky right, than getting, right. all play into, into the – but if you look at the 8-10 champions the last couple of years, what is what is standard there are veteran leadership on the court with obviously good coaching because you can't win championships without good coaching, but veteran leaders. And I think that's what you right. see. So when you look at our teams right now, 
Look at look at Dayton. The top two teams right now are Dayton and VCU battling for that number one seed. If you look at their roster, they're they're littered with juniors and seniors. Oh, wow. If you look at the third mm-hmm. place team, which is Richmond right now, T.J. Klein, Shondre Jones, two quality seniors leading them all year. Look at the fourth place team; they're tied for third with with uh, Rhode Island, three seniors in the starting lineup with a good mix of some younger players in there. St. Bonaventure led by seniors and juniors with a good mix. It, it, that's the formula in this league to be successful. Mm-hmm. That doesn't mean yeah. you can't win with good freshmen, but you know what? You know, right. Division one basketball, it's hard. You know, it's hard right. to do that yeah. at any level. <laughs> I'm going to put you right. out there, Jay. Who do you think is going to make the, long, the, the, the biggest run in, in the NCAA tournament to watch for in your conference right now? Well, you, you know – I think the teams that make the run, here's what I think in the NCAA, the teams that can make runs in the NCAAs are teams, for the most part, who can defend. Teams that can, you know, because there's so many good players in college basketball that can score the basketball. And a lot of times it comes, because, you know, we see all this scoring that goes on in the regular season, and scoring is up in college basketball. But if you think about the tournament, it, you know, you don't see any 90 to 89 games in the tournament. You see... 65 60 you know you know they grind them out so we have some teams that i think are very good defensively and i think there's no it's no secret that dayton and vcu and rhode island come right to mind as three very good solid defensive Mm -hmm. teams that make it difficult for you to score now on the other end you know each of those three teams though have one or two guys that can create his own shot and can make things happen on the offensive end. Because you obviously need to, you know, you can hold the other team to 50, but you've got to score 51. <laughs> so, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. so I do think, uh, I think of our teams, those three teams come to mind because they're so good defensively. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And now, Jay, the best place we can go, purchase tickets and stuff like that, Where's the where, where do you recommend, especially locally? Well, I would say uh, this, the box office, the box office at, for local folks, at, the box office at PPG, Ticketmaster on the website for both uh, PPG Paints and the Atlantic 10. I would encourage your listeners to go to the Atlantic 10 website, Atlantic10.com. Click on, you can click on the champion, men's basketball championship page. And I would encourage people, even local folks, to look at our digital, our digital fan guide because it has a lot of stuff. <laughs> not just for outside people, but even folks who are in the surrounding Pittsburgh area that maybe do not spend a lot of time in the city. But there are good seats available at reasonable prices. You can get them through our website. It will direct you to Ticketmaster and certainly at the arena. And, you know, what we have seen the last couple of years is that the two weeks prior to the championship when teams start getting locked in and people start getting really excited. Let's face it, people, mm-hmm. a lot of people aren't buying a lot of tickets in the summer for basketball when they're right. thinking about right. Pirates and Steelers and stuff. But right yeah. now, Super Bowl's over, you know, Pitt's on its way to the ACC tournament, you know, Duquesne's coming to ours. I mean, people start thinking about basketball. So uh, we encourage manage, folks, Jay. it's reasonable to go. <laughs> March Madness is yeah. the best time well, this time of the year is right after the season. I, I couldn't March. disagree more. I, I couldn't agree. I couldn't agree more. It's the greatest time of the year. Glad to be involved in yeah. basketball. Well, Same Jay, here. best place we can find information on you. Are you on Twitter, Jay? Uh, uh, to connect for you me, and stuff like. Well, let me let me yeah. tell you. I I always I only I do have a Twitter account, but most of the time I tweet through the conference basketball account. The A10 men's basketball. So we, the A10 because that's where we get most of the information for our fans. But yeah, I'm a Twitter, but I'm an old guy. Yeah, I'm not, I'm an old guy. My kids try to. My I have adult kids who try to teach me how to do Twitter. I, I'm 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 a slow person. I I still like to use a rotary phone. I tell my kids. <laughs> well, we look forward to the tournament coming to Pittsburgh, and uh, so sure appreciate you talking about it today with us. Well, and I look and forward. Right. Thank you for your time and and for for yeah. promoting our championship. I look forward to to meeting both of you folks when I come up to Pittsburgh. All right, sounds good. All right. Good talking to you guys. Thanks, Jay. Have a great day. Take care now. Bye-bye. Bye. 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 B